Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings card game. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm your host, Ted Bannock, and I was born to talk about cards. I love it. <laughs> uh, poor Grant. And... <laughs> <laughs> He's missing all He's missing all the plays. And yeah, so... all the plays. Yeah, so unfortunately, Grant can't be here with us tonight recording. We're recording a smaller chunk of episodes tonight because Grant uh, isn't here, and we don't like to do things without him. He is part of the lifeblood of the show, so, you know, I think it's important to um, to not go too far ahead without him. So, Grant, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one, buddy. Um, Yeah, and... We have a wonderful show. We and do, don't we, Ted? David, I could just, I could tell that you you were just born to thank our patrons. I was. Oh man. And you know, I don't want you to forget it. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna remind you. Yeah. So um thank you to all our patrons who help keep the lights on here. Also, patrons are eligible for um swag every year we usually try to release that around uh con of the rings time and i apologize to all the international uh swag recipients for 2021 i did have a misprint on the on the on the deck and i wanted to make sure that you got the updated print version so it's going to be a little bit of time before you get it uh, because i have to order the updated card do it included in your order but you will get it they're all packaged they're all ready to go right here you can see this bin right here that's where they're ready to go so um but thank you to all our patrons who are out there if you want to become a patron you just join right down here at uh, patreon.com slash card talk 2018 and i am going to shout out a huge thank you to all of them that's thardier Steven, Mark, Jason, Ryan, Manuel, Grant, Katie, Rachel, Tony, Valentin, Eric, Dern's father, Moritz, Anders, Shane, Micah, Chris, Reagan, Rob, not Robert, but Rob, Brandon, Scott, Joe, Peter, Niall, Carl, Vardine, James, Joshua, Matt, Russ, Justin, Jason, Bob, Daniel, Mike, Bob, David, Sean, Lou, Phil, Joseph, and Dominic. Also, if you're interested in seeing what Matt has to offer over at the blog, you can join us at the blog and see his written write-up of this stuff. Hey, he's over there at cardtalk2018.com, and you can get links to our old shows. You can get links to the current shows. You can also see write-ups that we are currently posting on, uh, on the cards that we're interested in. And it's really, it's really good because I was talking to Matt. I try to, I try to update him a couple times a week about what we're doing at the pod so he can kind of match up at the, at the blog. And <laughs> Ted, he's really, really excited about kind of the, um, the couple of cards that we've been doing here lately, we did Ranger bow a couple weeks ago, and now mm -hmm. we're doing another trappy Ranger card. Um, and so he is super excited. So um, if, if you want maybe um, some good passionate writing about these cards, check over at the blog again, it's cardtalk2018.com. He's super excited about this stuff. So, yeah, um, we get into a, a, a pretty good dive on the show, but then uh, the blog and the write-ups that we have dig, you know, even even deeper and you get some more experiences to, to yeah. draw from and that might give you some more ideas than just we have here. And and we try to purposely leave Matt off of the off of the blog stuff so he's writing stuff that's genuine to him and not stuff that's coming from us. So he picked up on something from Ranger Bow that we didn't even talk about. Um and so it was it was good stuff. So you know, this mm -hmm. is this is what we had in mind when um, when we when we made the blog. So that's what we're good. So, anyways, Ted, what are you born to talk about today? Uh, I am born to talk about Anborn. <laughs> Big surprise. Uh, so we are going to talk about the 
lore version of Anborn because he does have two ally versions. So today's episode is about the lore ally version of Anborn, which is his first iteration from Blood of Gondor. He is a four cost, one willpower, three attack, one defense, three hit point, Gondor Ranger. And his text reads, action, exhaust Anborn to return one trap card from your discard pile to your hand. Mm-hmm. Does it ever. Anborn. What do you got? What do you got, Dave? <laughs> I don't know what I got, but uh, I, I don't run traps. I, I used to have a trap deck that I played often, and I could okay. never get it to fire. This was before the... before. Uh, tactics traps were released and before some of the Mm -hmm. other stuff this was very very early on when um i guess our our friend matt duckworth would say this we were i was trapping when trapping was hard is what he i remember him (laughs) saying on the on the show but uh inborn helps you so much in a trap deck because you just want to keep trapping stuff like that's the whole point and it's not and it's not a specific trap it can be a you know a trap that is in your um in your discard it could be one of those tactics traps it could be a force snare which gets into your play area it could be you know it could be a trap from the staging area like it's just any trap and then with messenger of the king with and born um uh, seems like last week's episode we were also talking about messenger of the king a lot but um you know, again, to be able to put readying on Messenger of the King, um, on a Messenger of the King ally hero, I'm not sure exactly how you want to classify that that character, but uh, you know, mm-hmm. whoever gets Messenger of the King, it just becomes a better and easier target to do stuff with. So for Anborn to have, you know, for Messenger of the King, he has eight cost, and that's pretty good for you know, a lore ally with three attack um, or a lore hero with three attack. So, you know, in that ability, I feel like you can just ready heroes easier than you can ready uh, allies. So when you make Anborn an MOTK hero, you know, you have things like Leather Boots and Wingfoot and, you know, those (laughs) that cadre of strange readying cards and lore that can go on and oh yeah on top of you know the more traditional stuff cram and and uh you know unexpected courage of course but uh, so you know and then you know all it can almost get to the point where you know you you get your your favorite trap on top or the one that makes the most amount of sense um on top of the um encounter discard pile and you can almost bring it back forever and ever and ever you know, and it can always just be there, and you don't usually have to worry about um, wasting wasting the stats because you can ready Anborn. And so, I I just imagine that you know here you are at the end of your you know you, you use Anborn to attack, I guess he readies, and then you. Um, in the refresh phase and then you exhaust him in the refresh phase to bring a trap back and he's got leather boots on him and then so and then because he's got leather boots on he readies again in that in the in the uh, um questing phase because you're not going to use him to quest uh-huh. probably and then he's ready for attacking right like i mean <laughs> it just seems like that's the it's it just seems really good so yeah the leather I, boots timing is a little bit uh tricky but leather boots uh, is a one cost lore attachment to just refresh everyone who goes on a, a lore ranger character. So right. it fits him just fine, uh, which this can also go on his ally version, by the way, because it's limit one per character. Okay. So this, this fits uh, both whatever way you're going to run them. And it's response is after a location is revealed from the encounter deck, you exhaust the boots to ready the character. So this card's great because you could potentially uh, get two traps back in one turn if a it, just any form of readying leather boots included right well leather boots i always feel like because you, you know it's if you're gonna get i don't know it just seems like you trigger them and then you see if leather boots fire uh, you know or wing foot or you know those mm-hmm. i always put leather boots and wing foot kind of in the same 
in the same mental very space. Similar. Effects, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Because I think what Wingfoot is unique, and you have to name whether it's going to be an ally or uh, an enemy treachery or location or something, right? Yeah, same, one cost. That, unique goes on a ranger, so he can right. he can bear Wingfoot as well. But right. you have to correctly name. But if you you know, the funny thing is, is you can put both attachments on one character, and then you have a really high chance between a location right. and enemy. Unless right. you get all treacheries, that character's probably going to be ready. Right. <laughs> you really, if you really want it to happen. Right. So it just, seems, it just seems really, really good. And, and Wingfoot, is that target a hero or a character? Uh, that is a, ra- it's a ranger hero yeah, for Wingfoot. Say, it's gotta be so that's so. if you're using the MOTK, Messenger of the King contract, mm-hmm. to use him as a hero, which you can do. Right. So that's my that's my initial thoughts on Anborn, and I think that he is more pivotal to a trap deck than you know than other allies are you know of course you need attach attacking into the staging area if you're going to trap things um you know Haldir is very good at that um mm-hmm. so but uh you know I feel like there's there's who's the who's the, here's all my research guys my research is looking at Ted. Who's Ted? Who's the guy that reduces the cost of play traps? Uh, da- Hero Damrod. Damrod. Right, 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 right. So I mean, that's. <laughs> so I think that these two are are required reading for trap decks. So, Ted, what's what's your take? S- certainly, yeah, I've run trap decks before. Um, not recently. They're they're fun. Their effectiveness can be very scenario dependent. Yeah. I feel. Uh, but there are some where they're very, very helpful. Um, but then you have some scenarios where uh, some of the enemies cannot have attachments, you know, right. where there's some trolls and immune to player and effects and things. Stuff, right. Yeah. So it's kind of scenario dependent, but as far as Anborn goes, his, his recursion is nice and he's expensive to play for an ally, but even in sphere, you have elf stone, right. which is the one cost attachment. Uh, goes on a location, and when you explore that location, the first player gets to play an ally for free. So in Sphere, there's a lot of support for him, which is really nice. You could just play Mono Lore, and he fits in great, which is uh, right. always very nice. Right, because uh, there are some traps that people run without playing a trap deck. So Oh, um, sure. There's scenarios where Forest Snare, and even yeah. uh, Ranger Spikes is one of my favorite cards like in the game. Right, right, right. That's I'll sometimes play that in lore decks with not a trap deck. I'll just throw in ranger spikes because I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, ranger spikes is is a is a great card to play regardless. So, mm-hmm. and his so when I look at what Anborn when I look at Anborn, it's like what does he do? He he's got three attack if you need it, which is also strong. He can soak some archery, and his his consistent recursion is nice, but four is very steep. Uh, there are some other ways to recur traps back to your hand um in sphere i think the most common thing that people run is i'll put airborne hammersmiths right um because they they're a two cost ally that when you play the airborne hammersmith you get the top most attachment so it's not nearly as powerful and the good thing about the airborne hammersmith is if you're playing multiplayer it can be anybody's so if you lose a trap that's fine but if somebody else lost their you know steward of gondor or something you can pull that that guy's steward out of the you know so it's it's a little bit helpful the hammersmith is yeah so i compare those effects and anborn's recursion is very very nice and i think with damrod coming out to reduce the cost of traps you now have more resources for things like anborn right which is very nice yeah. so it's 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 a good effect um i haven't tried him as messenger of the king hero yet I've, I think I had some other players I asked about it who did, and they said they were kind of wishy-washy because it's it's to to pick up just one trap a turn, two with an attachment, like, is that strong enough for your hero slot? And I don't have any firsthand experience trying that, but if, you, if anyone has, uh, send us an email, message us on Facebook. You know, I, I'd be really curious to know how he measures up as a hero because I haven't, I haven't done him uh, in, in that capacity yet. I think he becomes a good hero, you know, a good hero attacker just in case something gets through. You know, if you're if you're running a full trap deck, then you're going to want to use something like something that can attack the staging area. So, 
mm-hmm. like how deer done here although i don't ever know i don't i'm not as familiar with somebody using done here in a trap deck i feel like that's not what people do but um you know i feel like yeah. the classic the classic lineup is you know damrod haldir and then some tactics hero you know like a right to get weapons for haldir to, yeah to get weapons and the other the other traps you know so you right. know, somebody like i don't know like i <laughs> i knew who I, who it was until we just started this conversation and then I can't the, the guy who's kneeling and presenting the red arrow to Theoden. What's it? <laughs> oh, it? uh, here gone, here gone. Right. I feel here like here. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, sure. you know, like just because you get to bring out allies for a reduced cost and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, like, have... so it's just, anyways, the point is, is that I think that that's kind of the, the, so to replace your, your, your tactics hero with this lore hero may be tough, and I don't think you want to give up Haldir to, to attack him in the staging area, and I don't think you want to give up Damrod. So, you know, it, maybe Messenger of the King isn't so awesome, but there's a plenty of other stuff. Do you play this guy in, in a non-trap deck, in a non-Gondor it, Ranger trap deck? No, no, he's, <laughs> he's very, like... So his three attack and lore is great, but you can also get that from like ally quick beam. Quick beam. Is, <laughs> yep. Quick it's beam like is the, really great. Well, half and, the cost. Yeah, and, and even some of there's even other lore allies like the wandering end who costs two and he's got two attack and three hit points. Right. So if you're looking for attack or some sturdiness, there's I think better choices. And really you're playing Anborn because you're running traps or you might be running one or two traps that you might want to reoccur. Your your gimmick might be just to recur your you know your forest snares and then kill right. enemies and then snare them again. Right. And, and I, I and think outside of that, that's good, he's gonna, though, he's gonna you be, know it's good. Oh yeah, he's going to be too expensive. I feel for anything right. other than that. Right. Yeah. I I think I think you're right. Um, like last week's episode when we were talking about for long, it just seems like this guy goes into that one one build and you know that's and that's fine but it just i just don't see him going into for four costs like you said it just doesn't seem like he's going to go into very many yeah. other and, builds he is unique so he could go into a fellowship contract maybe he could make a fellowship trap uh, contract that's true. you know like yeah he, I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't know like he, there's, there's lots of he, fun ideas but mm-hmm. Cause there's a yeah, buff. then but then you're not getting his his that you know his stats get boosted and then you're just exhausting him. But but you have the flexibility there, right? Right, and that's he I think the that that's I think that that's what his 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 beauty is is that you get the flexibility of pulling the trap back or being able to swing for three. You know, like mm-hmm. and then if you have readying or something on him um, as a as a hero or even as a ally, I don't think there's very much in the way of ally readying. Uh, that we well, haven't I was already just talked about. That. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there's a few that we missed. Um, so if you're going to use him as an ally, there's a couple ways to ready him. In leadership, you have Ever Vigilant. Okay. That is just a one cost readying ally. So that becomes one cost pick up a trap. Right. Right for one leadership resource. Right. Uh, you also are you have... running? Are you running leadership with this guy? Probably not. Um, you could if, if again if you want the access to the readies. Yeah. Um, someone else could be, if someone else is playing leadership, then, I mean, tons of ways to ready in minor leadership sure. is strength of arms. And, but right. anyway, uh, <laughs> so just a couple, a couple things to mention ever vigilant ready as an ally. There's a spirit card, uh, two arms, which is zero cost. And that ready as an ally with an attachment. Yeah. You have one, two arms. That was, I think that was your nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it was I recall uh, from our night at the bar yeah. uh, so that readies an, and, and there's and then you mentioned uh, the leather boots is also really is really really great for him because mm-hmm. as an ally leather boots could get you to like you exhaust him pick up a trap the quest phase comes you flip a location he readies again pick up another trap or attack for three I think leather boots is a really strong card for him right and, and if you don't need capacity. to pick up the trap you have him ready and you can use him to attack you know and you give him ranger bow 
you know, and then if there's nothing <laughs> engaged with him, you know, like, I, you know, I'm I'm thinking as a solo player, like traps are traps are tough to run as a solo player sometimes because you just I think I think they're yeah, yeah, it's tough. You can there's some key traps you can fit like ranger spikes is i think a great card for solo right but like a full-on trap deck i think is not it, it can be real tough yeah it's hard because you can't do some of the things that you need to have done although you do have your healing and sphere and stuff like that so i don't know you don't just don't have a lot of cancellation options so that's the that's a problem but uh i don't know i like i like what amp Anborn brings to that ranger, that Gondor ranger trap deck. But, you know, it's funny, I'm slowly talking myself out of him being like totally <laughs> awesome. Not, I didn't think he was totally awesome to begin with, anyways, but, you know, like you're probably not recurring a ton of traps, even in the most dedicated trap deck, you know, it just. Yeah, usually Damrod is drawing you enough traps, like for the whole game. You know, right. you usually can draw into enough traps to play one per turn. The good part uh, about because because that's all you need to play is one per turn because right. they don't really. I mean, they uh, with stack. the exception of the, yeah, with the exception of the tactics traps, because those go they don't go to the staging area. The tactics traps go to your like Player. play area. I believe. Right, they go in front of you so, for when people engage you. So followed, now sort of, outmatched. Those two and outmatch are the, are the yeah. two, yeah. There's one. so yeah there's for that one, reason. Isn't, isn't there one more? There's one more tactics. Uh, I I think there's only the two. Okay, but I'm not an expert in it. The good news, the good thing is, is that um, Anborn can get you any trap in your discard. It doesn't have to get the topmost trap. So that's always, you know, so yeah, that's that's take... that gives you some flexibility. So if you're playing multiplayer and you have two or three things in a trap and three of them end up in your discard pile, at least you can you know pick which one you want back out you know which version of the ranger spikes you want back out on the table yeah so he's got flexibility overall um i think before we ring him we'll touch briefly on his art and any lore again oh. grant's not here to be the the full expert but i can shed a little bit that i know um yeah go ahead go ahead lore this. master b uh all i i mean his i'll put, let me pull up his his flavor, to, I mean, he's a, a servant of, um, he reports to Faramir, right. one of Faramir's rangers. And all I know is that he's the one that, sp he spotted Gollum at the Forbidden Pool, and he's the one that reported it to Faramir. But yeah, there's there's a couple of, there's a couple of, uh, of rangers that were, were drawing bows on Gollum, and I feel like Anborn was one of them. Mm -hmm. Anborn, and I think Damrod may have been the other one, too. Like the, this is, I, uh, very likely that they were all in that part. Yeah, of the they book. were all in that um, party under. Yeah, journey to the crossroads thing. <laughs> yeah, so. his flavor text is: I, I sent my keenest huntsman to seek him, but he slipped them, and they had no sight of him till now, save Anborn. So I, that's I think that's actually Faramir talking to someone. I don't know if it's Frodo or who else saying that they were tracking Gollum. They escaped, and then I think Anborn saw him at the pool. And, right. and found him and, and then reported them. Right. It's slightly different in the um, in the book. The book it has it, in, or sorry, slightly different in the movie than in the in the book. That that whole way it goes down. So I guess you're right. Oh about, yeah. I just looked up. You're right. Followed and outmatched are the only two tactics trap. I thought that there was a third one. Maybe that's an Alep card or something. But oh, could be. Yeah. Um, so what about the art? Um, it's, it's fine. He looks like a Gondor ranger. He's in his cloak and he's got his bow and that's, kind of, he's in the woods and that's what I expect him to, to be doing. Hunch down. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because when we did ranger bow, the ranger bow had like this similar, like bright background. That's kind of, you know, like ethereal sort of looking. And so it's interesting how they kind of kept it all, um, kept it consistent at least because i feel like you know the ranger bow is supposed to be part of this gondor ranger gondor you know trap thing and so and damrod i it, the only thing i can say is i mean I, I love the way that he looks his artwork looks really good but it looks like he hasn't slept in like probably three days he's got these huge 
red under bags under his eyes. It looks like. I don't hey know. man, yeah, he's he's a ranger of a thillion, yeah. man. He's doing work for uh, for Fingermere, right? Yeah. So he's, he's probably tired. Yeah, he is tired. So, but I love I love you know. As uh, as one of our patrons, Jason said, it's uh, the men who poop deck. You know, like that's what that's what this guy's doing. Here. Oh, he's uh, <laughs> popping a squat there in the forest. I see. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> right. He's laying a trap, all right. Yeah, he is. <laughs> 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 and they were worried uh, about Gollum defiling the woods, <laughs> the, the sacred Hennethan noon, uh, and born. This is what he does on his. Yeah. It's what they don't have. This is him pictured on April first, and so he's like, "Wait till, wait till Faramir sees this one. Yeah. It's so funny." <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. Okay, anyways. Uh, nothing like a little bathroom humor to, to round out the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Let's, Should we put, bring this guy? Put, uh, let's put some rings on. Uh, okay. So, as you may know, we have a highly scientific and arbitrary system where we ring a card on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is the one card in the game to rule them all, or one of the best cards in the game, and a 10 is the card we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made. So... Um, Ted, I forced you to go first last time, so I will go first again this time. Uh, or again, I'll go first this time, and I will okay. just say that I think that um, that Anborn again. I think he just fits into one sort of deck type. I don't reach for him when I'm building, like even a Gondor deck. You know, Gondor deck can handle. You know, there's not even space for him there. Yeah. You know, like it just seems you like. Can... We didn't mention it, but he can get the the attack bonus from yeah, visionary leadership, leadership Bormir, yeah. and he can get the willpower bonus from visionary leadership. But at a four cost, it's pretty steep, yeah. and it's for lore resources. Yeah, you know you can. So you make a good point. Yeah, so I think that I think he's he suffers from four long disease is that he fits into one one deck. He fits into that deck really well. Uh, you know his role in that deck, I think, is is a little bit. But if I'm comparing Forlong to Anborn, I feel like Forlong could, doesn't have to be in an Outlands deck, but Anborn helps with with the with the trap deck and helps him move along. And so Matt at the blog probably will have a million other things to say about this, but um, I I have to give him a similar ring rate. I'm going to say he's a little bit better, so I'm going to say he's he's an eight. But again, I'm just as I flip through my binders looking for cards to, to inspire me you know this guy inspires me to to build one deck and that's it you know like hey let's build a trap deck okay here's Amborn <sighs> pooping in the woods go ahead ted <laughs> yeah uh, i'm also going to put him a little a little uh farther down it's last week i gave, I gave prolong a 4 and he's very specific but i think cuz his, his i think his effect is really powerful and anborn his effect is good but because you're recurring traps, it can be strong because you can keep recurring the traps that's helping you most. But you're with Damrod really boosting that archetype. It, he doesn't need to hit the table for your game to really take off. A trap deck can do just fine if you never see him, I feel I feel like. So I, I'm going to give him a seven, a little better than you, because uh, I think he's, he's still expensive. But again, with the Damrod reduction... It helps a lot. And all of his support, too, is in Sphere. Like, uh, most of the traps are in Sphere, except for those two tactics. A lot of the attachments we named are in Sphere. He has out of Sphere support that we mentioned. But a lot of what he needs to function, you can get just within lore, which is great. And it's all inexpensive things, too, for how much he cost. Right. So I'll give him a seven. Okay. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, we just talked about... Ally L Landborn. Landborn. <laughs> we just talked about Ally Amborn. Join us again next week as we talk about more cards from the game. Have a great day, everybody. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons, and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash cardtalk2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus 
regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L O T R L C G on YouTube. And there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.